Greetings everyone, Greg here again with another video helping you transform your business, maybe transform your life. In this video, we're looking at Odoo and how you use many to one relationships to create a complete application that integrates your models together and the kind of architecture you need to build an enterprise application. So before we get started, Go below, please click like, please click subscribe and leave comments if you can. It really does help us out. So we're gonna get started right away, like we always do. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into teaching many to one after teaching this concept so, so many times. I'm gonna give my best cut here. If you guys have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. But this should make it clear for people. I've pulled up Odoo and I pulled up a standard sales order. So I'm assuming that if you're asking about many to one relationships in Odoo, you basically can get around the sales app and you know it fairly well. So here in, uh, we got our sales order up. And the one thing we want to do, if we're looking at relationships and fields and how the models are fitting together, is you want to turn on your debug mode. So we're, we got up here and we got a question mark the bug equals one, so we can like examine our fields, right? And so we're gonna take this starting from a functional perspective. We have a sales order header, and in this we have the name of the sales order right here. This is the name property. I can like mouse over it, and you can say, I should say the name field. So this is the field name, so we can see that, and we can see it is of type character. If we come over here, to order date, we can mouse over it and see that this is field date underscore order and it's of type date time. Now, this is obviously about many to one. So let's look at a, a many to one field. If we come over here to customer, we'll see that this is the field partner underscore ID, obviously in the sale dot order object. And here we see that it's a many to one. So what does that really mean? What that means is that we can have one record here within our sales order that's tied out to potentially many different ones that, that it could select from. I've never really cared for the many to one term for trying to explain it to people when in fact there's one uh, field in this record that matches many in the others. It seems like it's flipped around, but don't let it confuse you. Use the functional aspects here to to see that this is a many to one relationship and we can only have one customer here, but there's many of them to select from. Now, a lot of times what we do is we use diagrams to show these relationships and it can be really helpful. And all of this is coming from database terminology. So, you know, if you want more in-depth articles and videos and things on this, you can learn a lot by understanding basic database terminology when it comes to many to one relationships, one to many relationships, many to many relationships, things like that. It's, it's all about database relationships and connecting tables together. <clears throat> In Odoo, we discuss them as, as models. So what's, what we want to do is look at this diagram real quick. And I'm going to pull up this diagram. And I'm I just happen to be uh, using Lucid charts here. And uh, we're going to focus, first of all, on the sales order right here, the sales order model. And we have the name of the model, and then of course the technical name of what is used when you're referencing it, sale.order. And we all of the models in Odoo have an, a, a field ID. And these are the primary keys for every model in Odoo. And so when it creates a table out in Postgres, the database, it's creating a table with an ID that's a, a primary key that gets auto-incremented for us. That's just built into the Odoo framework. And I added a couple of other fields in here. Now, obviously, this is just a small sampling of all the fields in the sales order header. We have our active uh, flag of whether it's active or not. I think that might have been a, might not even be one in there. But that's one of the fields, a name uh, field that you can have. And then we're going to look at our first partner ID, which is the many to one. So this partner ID many to one is in this diagram matching up here to our partner ID, as you can see there, field, partner ID, type many to one. And it's related, if you see at the bottom of this here, 
tool help, you'll see its relationship right there. It's telling us it's related to res.partner. So we can see this in this diagram. We have this many to one relationship that ties to our res.partner table, which is our list of customers. And so it's really that simple. Uh, when you see many to one it, with inside of table, just know that that particular field is going to tie to a nether table that will have an arbitrary number of records in it. It could have no records in it, which means that you'd have nothing to assign here. And that, that, that is completely possible. You know, you would just have a, uh, an empty value here or a none in Python terms. And uh, null in a lot of language, you say just nothing in there. Or you would have a tie to a record in this contact table, but you can only have one in here, right? And so this is basically all, all you need to understand. But I, what I've done is I've created a few more examples. So hopefully it'll be really clear to those. It's just maybe a little confusing. Let's look at another mini to one. So if we come over here to other info, you'll notice that we have under sales team, another field called team underscore ID. And we can see the object is named sale.order. Again, same model. And then type many to one. So another many to one. And at the bottom, we can see this relationship is to CRM.team. So if we jump over to our diagram again, I've, I've shown this one here that we have under sales order dot sale order that our team ID and this F key or F K that I have here means foreign key. And that's just a way of labeling the, 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 key, the keys that are have another relationship to another table. Now this is really a throwback from database. We don't really talk about foreign keys much in Odoo. Um, when we're talking about models, kind of because it's implied by we use this underscore ID convention that helps us as soon as we see partner underscore ID, I know by the fact that it says partner underscore ID and that this is a many to one relationship, that to me infers that this is a foreign key to another table. Whereas if, in a, if you were in a, a pure database like environment like Postgres that didn't have this way of referring to relationships, you wouldn't really know in the diagram uh, if it was just holding an integer, for example, that that particular field might be a foreign key to another field. So do it's, it's about documentation and being clear so people know um, that, that these, are, these are foreign keys. So this, this foreign key, this team ID, many to one, is related to our, sa our sales team, crm.team. So this is going to have a list of records of all of our sales teams, and we can assign a team, and it'll select them from this record here using the many to one. Now, to come full circle and see how this works, inside of our sales team, if we come here and we click on it, we're going to see that there's a team leader option here. So if I come here to edit, I can pick a team leader. And you'll notice that this is also pulling, if we look at it, user underscore ID, object CRM, it's a mini to one. Ah, and the relationship is actually res.users. I, I, I had thought it was res.partner. Uh, so I actually have my uh, diagram wrong here because I have it going back up to res.partner. So uh, in this case, we would want to create uh, a users to make this just how it should be and just so you guys can see how easy it is to kind of do this stuff um, that I would redirect this to here I'm sorry I would actually do it this way delete this one and come from here to here like that so we have the sales team its user ID ties to res.users and ironically, res.users, if I pull up our models here, is going to have in it a relationship, I am sure. The partner ID, related partner. So here inside of our users record we have a relationship to related partner 
If we click on this, and I'm showing you going through the models list inside of the technical things, uh, that we can confirm that this is related to res.partner. So we update our diagram. So we'll call this partner underscore ID. And it also is a mini to one that we would go from here to here. So this gives us the diagram. I'm going to keep that in and not edit it. I want you guys to see how on the fly you can fix these things and give yourself a little bit of documentation when you're working this stuff out. Uh, you don't need to diagram the whole thing, obviously, but if you're trying to work and add the models and seeing how things fit together, these diagrams can kind of help. And so the only one we really didn't discuss on here uh, that I had was if you go to the contact table. So let's say we're on, um, we're on here. Let me just go back to just a, a quote and pull up our contact that we'll see here that we have in our company address, we have a country. And the country ID, as you can see, field country I underscore ID is the field, ties to, you know, is, is part of the res.partner object. It is also a mini to one. And you can see the relation down there to res.country. So we can see this relationship now represented here, that we have country ID, and we can confirm once again that that's the, I'm sorry, right here. Uh, we can confirm that's the name of the, the field, and then it is a many to one relationship to res.country, which is gonna tie this together so we can get the, the names of the countries. So that gives you one, two, three, four, five, like five different uh, many to ones that kind of tie together a sale order and the, the teams on, the, on there, as well as how it ties back to users and, and uh, the contacts and so forth. So hopefully working through this to the end, you've got a reasonable understanding of how many the ones work and, and how they, they fit in with the framework and so forth. And when you see them now and you start to work with them, you're not going to go, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know or understand how many to ones work. So if you like this video, please go below, click like, click subscribe. And in future videos, I'll get into more of like how you would represent this possibly in code or, you know, there's plenty of examples in my beginner tutorials. You can get go down below and click and, and see the courses I have available as well. So thank you very much for watching.